اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقدة من لساني يفقهوا قولي I need to start with the premises, which is very important. That is that there are knowledge can be divided into two types. One is knowledge that you can call occult sciences. For example, you study zodiac signs, you study palmistry, you study magic, so on and so forth. These are occult sciences and basically Islam doesn't want us to focus on occult sciences, even if there's truth to it. Right? Magic has an effect, we know magic has an effect, magic is real, but the Prophet said it's kufr to get into magic. Uh, in the same way occult sciences like palmistry or zodiac signs. Islam wanted to take us out of, you can say, superstitions and sciences that revolve around superstitions, um, whether it is tarot cards or crystal readings and, or you know, all these different things, and wanted us to focus on knowledge based upon what? In the sama wal basara wal fuad. The knowledge you get from your eyes and your hearing and your understanding of your brain using your eyes and ears. In the Sama wal Basara wal Fuad, this terminology is used in Quran over and over again. So Islam helped. So you had the Dark Ages. And what do you have in the Dark Ages? You have the rise of occult sciences superstition, you have the rise of believing in myths, including Catholicism, Catholic teachings of Christianity, you have the rise of, uh, you can say, people considered it, oh, let's solve the mystery of this or the mystery of that, rather than focusing on observation, which is your eyes. Right? Observation based knowledge, which, what, what is it that we call observation based knowledge? What is it called? What is observation, what is observation based knowledge called? The occult sciences, for example, as an example, zodiac, it's not based upon observation. You can't prove anything based upon observation. Palmistry, for example, looking at someone's hands, you can't prove, okay, this is this because of this. You can't prove anything based upon observation. Observation-based knowledge is called what? Science. Right? So the Qur'an wanted to take, or the Qur'an did take, historically, the people out of occult sciences no, science that cannot be observed, it just exists. Whether it is numerology, you know, playing with numbers, when was your birthday, and so on and so forth, or astrology, all those sciences, but Quran wanted us to emphasize on this. And Quran saw, and this is a small side point, but Quran saw the sciences based upon observation for what reason? Why do we observe the universe? For what, what is the, what is Quran call it? What does Qur'an call looking at the universe? Ayah, right? The ayah of Allah. I'll just write it in English. Ayah means what? Sign or miracle. So my first point is, Islam taught us not to look at even if they have some reality, not to focus on occult sciences, but to focus on what can be known by observation. And so humanity moved from the dark ages into observation. Humanity moved from, instead of relying on numerology or zodiac signs or astrology or palmistry or any of those types of knowledges into a world where things would be observed and appreciate and things are appreciated based upon our ability to what observe them and this is the basis of what becomes science 
later on. Now, so Islam goes into, now there's one thing that I need to mention that's very, very important. And I'm not speaking against the Jews when I say this, but I'm just making this as a point, as a historical point. Uh, Muslims went into Spain through the conquests of Tariq bin Ziyad, who was a Muslim general, we can talk about him one day. But Muslims went into Spain, and who helped Muslims get into Spain? The Jews. Why did the Jews help Muslims get into Spain? Why did Jews help Muslims get into Spain? Why were Jews interested in allowing Muslims to come into Spain? They're the ones that told the Muslims, take this navigational route and take this route and enter from this area. They knew the inside and outs of Spain. And why did the Jewish people help the Muslims enter into Spain? Because they were oppressed in Spain by who? By the Christians. And the Jews were forced to live where? In the ghettos. And the Jewish people were considered what? The murderers of who? Of Christ, who was their God. Okay? Remember, we're talking about the Dark Ages. So this is not just a statement, but it was very, very, very real and very, very emotional to them that these people are the ones that what? And the Jews used to say what about Jesus? He's a bastard. And he's born illegally, without marriage. Right? He's born without a, uh, without a known father. He's a magician. He was, uh, he's not a prophet, but he's the opposite of a prophet. So that's why the Jews, they tried to what? What did the Jews do? Try to kill him, right? They tried to put him on the cross. And here are the Christians, and the Christians are like, oh, you guys, you guys try to kill Jesus our God. So we're going to teach you a lesson, and we're going to put you in the ghettos. And they were, it's, we think of, when we talk about Jews being persecuted, we think only about the Holocaust. It's not true. Actually, the Jewish people have been going through torture for almost 2,000 years of their history. Okay? Okay. So, uh, and actually the Holocaust is, is actually over magnified than it needs to be. But actually when you look at the whole persecution, it's actually more than even the Holocaust in a way. But anyway, that's a secondary point. Muslims get into Spain and they bring this idea that, hey, we're going to, knowledge should not be based upon occult sciences. Knowledge should be based upon what we can what? Observe. And the Jewish people were also the people of the book. And they liked this idea because it, it coincided with their teachings. It coincided with the Old Testament. It coincided with the Torah. And uh, so, so Muslims come into Spain and they establish what? What do Muslims do in Spain? They establish universities, okay? And these universities, they help to take the world out of the dark ages into a world of what? Observation. But here's the sinister part, here's the difficult part. In the process of taking out humanity from dark ages to observation, So let's take with some examples. The idea of freedom of thought. Okay. Muslims came along and they said, oh, there's no idols and these extra forces and stars c controlling your life and, 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 and all these other occults trying to control your life. No, no, no. You have freedom of thought. You're not stuck. You have freedom 
And some people came along and they said, no. Listen to what I'm about to say, it's very important. You don't have just... So, so the world was in one direction, right? And Islam took it to the other direction. And wherever Islam took it to, a certain group of people tried to take it to the next level, even more. For example, women would be a good example. In the Dark Ages, how were women treated? Right? Then Islam came along and treated women better. This part's very clear. Then somebody else came along and said, no, but why should we treat women just like that? We should just make them just like men. We should just say men and women are absolutely what? Equal. So, on the one side they were treated like animals. And Islam said, oh, treat them like moms or daughters or sisters. And somebody came along and said what? Make them equal, right? Maybe when women were treated like animals, also you can look at other aspects. I'm going to come into the other aspects in a little bit later. But the point I'm trying to make is that Islam brought knowledge to Spain, and from Spain it spread where? Then that's where the Germans came to Spain, the French came to Spain, the Italians came to Spain, the British came to Spain, and they started getting this idea, we need to move away from occult sciences into, into observational sciences, and that was the beginning of what? What was the result of this? Renaissance. Not yet. First is, before Renaissance, what happens? These universities gave the people freedom of thought, and this freedom of thought helped them see what's wrong with what? Who's controlling Spain and Constantinople and that whole European area? Yeah. Okay, so Christianity was holding the entire European continent, right? And when those universities came and they gave a freedom of thought and they said, hey, observation, who's the first scientist, the first famous scientist that starts to disagree with the church? Who's the first famous scientist who disagrees with the church that leads to the next historical stage? Do you have Dark Ages? Yes. Charles Darwin. No. <laughs> Darwin came only 200 years ago. Are you retarded? Galilee. Galilee was the one who was looking at the stars and he said, the earth is not the center of our solar system. The sun is the center and we're going around the sun and it's not the earth, because everybody thought that the everything, the sun is going around the earth, okay? And Galilee said, no, 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 the church is wrong. Actually, the uh, sun, we're going around the sun, not the earth going around the sun. And Galilee said, you're wrong, I'm right, I can prove it, I have the math to prove it, I have the observation, I have telescopes to prove it, the church is wrong. The church said what? You're wrong, you've done heresy. You're murtad, you need to be killed, and so on and so forth. And so observational science began to disprove what? Religion. Because for them, that was their religion, which was what? Christianity. And as a result of observational science beginning to prove what? Observational science beginning to prove religion wrong, occult science is wrong. What happened as a result of that? Secularism. No, not yet. That's way far away. First thing that happened was the Reformation. What's the Reformation? The Reformation is 
The Pope is what? Nothing. He's not divine. The Pope has no religious say. We're going to interpret the Bible because they didn't want to, because everything happens in step, right? Even though they were talking against the established religion of that time, which was Catholicism, Catholic. But then they said, oh, what? But the Catholic Church is wrong. And so then they said, look, you don't have the right to interpret the Bible. We're not going to allow the, Bible, the Pope to tell us what the Bible says. We're going to read the Bible for what? For ourselves. And we're going to interpret the Bible for what? Ourselves. We're going to, tell, we're going to say what the Bible is saying. You don't have to tell us what the Bible is saying. And that is how Martin Luther started what? What was the result of the uh, Reformation? Schism and Christianity? But what were they? Lutheranism? No, not yet. So, the Dark Ages, Islam takes them into the world of observation. Universities are established in Spain. And as a result, and there's a lot here that I'm not talking about yet that I will in this, uh, maybe later on. But as a result of Reformation, Christianity gets divided into what? Protestants and? Protestants and Catholics. Catholics was what was already there, the established religion of that time. Protestantism said, hey, Catholic doesn't even understand the world of observation. They don't know what's really going on in the world. They're wrong about the earth being flat. The earth is not flat, it's round. The sun doesn't go around the earth. I mean, the sun doesn't go around the earth. The earth goes around the sun, so on and so forth. Galilee proved them wrong. Martin Luther comes in, he says, you know what? Yes, there's too much oppression being done by the Catholic Church. We need to separate from them. And this is what we're going to do. We're going to say the Pope has no say. We're going to read the Bible for ourselves. And we're going to say what the Bible says. Even